Welcome to the Dawn of Intuition. I'm your host, J.D. Kindred, and this is the time to awaken to a new way of being. Are you feeling an inner call to make the world a better place or to live more joyfully? We each have this inner compass guiding us to our own unique purpose and gifts. As an intuition and empowerment expert, I dare you to take action on that gut feeling or inner knowing. Intuition is simply a muscle that needs to be strengthened. Whether you need it personally or professionally, your intuitive insights create space for new opportunities. Stay tuned with me for tips and tricks on listening to those quiet whispers of wisdom, my next retreat dates, or how to work with me. Are you ready to live the life of your dreams with more joy and ease? The dawn of intuition starts now. Welcome everyone to Transformation Talk Radio, the dawn of intuition, awaken to a new way of being. I'm your host, J.D. Kindred, and today I'm inviting my identical twin sister back again on the show, Jasmine. Welcome, Jazz. Thank you, J.D. I'm so happy to be back. I know that you do regular talks on Insight Timer, where you talk live about everything intuition. Now, I encourage you all to follow her on Insight Timer because that allows you the opportunity to ask any of your burning questions. But in today's episode, we are going to share with this audience the most common questions that JD gets asked. So JD, here's your first question. How do I know if it's my intuition or brain talking? Yeah. Yeah. Again, all of these questions are the most common and I love all of I like, I love when people ask me questions. I love when people are curious about intuition. Um, yeah, this is, this is a great question because, uh, you know, I believe that the intuition is really, you know, body knowledge and the mind and the brain is the logic. So it's almost this constant fight of the mind and body, mind and heart. You know, you hear this a lot. And it's about really dropping from our from our brain, from the logical mind back into the body. Most people are living really in this top half. And it's like, hey, can we just drop in? There's so much body wisdom. So much wisdom, I believe, is held in the body. And we all receive intuition differently. You know, in the up other episodes, I'm always talking about like, what is intuition? What intuition is not? I do a lot of courses like this. People can, can go on my website and find these courses. Um, so, yeah, it's like, when do we know it's that intuitive voice or that logical mind? Now, I consider myself to be extremely intuitive and... I'm extremely logical too. I'm thinking all the time. So how do I, how can I differentiate that little voice? In our last uh, couple episodes ago, we were talking about the differences of how we receive intuition. And even though we are identical twins, we receive intuition drastically different, mm -hmm. which I want the audience to know there's not one better way than the other. So for me, I consider myself more clear audience. That means I hear messages. I really hear a clear message. And that voice is different than my logical brain. And it's taken me, you know, I know you think I was just born with this intuition and this confidence with this intuition, and I, and I wasn't. It took me decades to gain this confidence and I've learned that that voice is very different. So that intuitive voice that I hear in my mind is very neutral. It's very uh, non-reactive, balanced, calm, encouraging. Whereas my, you know, maybe mental, logical mind tends to be very reactive, um, uh, very emotional, very judging, you know, I just want to, uh, I just, uh, you know, a sense of urgency. Now, yes, my intuition does have some urgent messages, sometimes like big things in my life. It's like, stop, go do this. It's quite urgent at a time, but you know, there's less judgment around it. It's like, I can hear the message and go, okay, I choose not to do that. And I continue on with my path and my path is great. The, you know, however it would have flowed. So 
I don't know if I really explained it enough, but it's, it's a different, and the more you practice again, the more you just realize, is this my reactive mind or is this coming from a really calm, centered, neutral mind? Often uh, a telltale sign for me is the messages are very fast and they're very fast and they surprise me. It's like, you know, I'll ask myself a question and then I'll receive a message and it's like, brilliant. Like I'm like, when I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> That's not, I've, that's usually not my logical mind because my logical mind is very like strategic and uh, limiting and like what I think is possible. And my intuitive mind is extremely creative and extremely like thinks bigger and wants more. And it's like always a win-win situation where I'm like, that is a brilliant idea. Um, and I know that is generally my intuition instead of my logical mind. That's so well said, JD, because that's how I would describe it as well, where my intuition is like the initial thought that pops in my head that is not attached to the outcome. It's just, yeah, neutral, subtle, but then my thoughts become limiting and fear-based and they start talking me out of my initial feeling or initial thought. So I think for me, because I have that clear knowingness, I'll just get a really quick flash answer. And it, you know, I assume it's my thought, but it's instant. Um, so yeah, it's about just trusting, trusting that. I love that. I love that. Very well said. Because when I, uh, I hold retreats, like in-person retreats for this, and we do a lot of exercises, all of my retreats are really experientially focused. So you have enough experiences, you know this to be true for yourself. And often uh, what I say, you know, you're supposed to ask a question and people have already received the answer before the question is finished. And then they're like, and then after they sit and wait, and then uh, once they're waiting, uh, that logical mind kicks in, like what you're saying. And that happens for me too. So for me, I've just become super hypersensitive to while I'm asking the question, maybe word two, I've already received the answer. So people in their logical minds will say to me, well, JD, I didn't even finish asking the question. How could my intuition even know the question? No, your intuition is so smart. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. 10 times smarter. <laughs> it's 10 times faster. I don't even know if 10 times, maybe hundred times. Like our mind really limits us and our brains are amazing. Look at what humans have created. Our brains are amazing, amazing tools. But I believe that intuition is way more efficient. And that's why I do these shows, to encourage people to go back into living a life with more flow and ease and not struggling with that fight in that in, in your brain. So yes, I love that quick, quick answer before you stop second guessing yourself. And it's often like, oh, I never would have thought of that. Or, ooh, that's really edgy. Or, ooh, that's really out of my comfort zone. Or, how could I afford that? Or how could I do this? Or what are people going to say? We, you know, it's like, oh, before all of that starts infiltrating, just know your answer of like, oh, I received my answer. It doesn't have to take long. So yeah, very well said. I'm la a great, great example for you as well, Jazz. Okay. So on to the next question. Sometimes I get conflicting messages. Any suggestions on how to navigate this? Yeah. So people... Again, it's the struggle of head and heart. I like to call that more the ego, the ego versus intuition. And I do. I did a whole uh, transformation talk radio show on that ego and fear versus intuition, because this is one of people's most common questions. Like, you know, just yesterday I was doing a, a live and I asked people, how confident are you? one to 10 on a scale of one to 10, because first it's fun. First to check in, am I living an intuitive life? You know, maybe one, meaning I live maybe 10% intuitively and 10 is a hundred percent intuitively. So first I like to be, I like people to gauge, like, where are you in your life right now? And then also to understand 
how you receive intuition. So learning that as well. And when we have these ideas of like, okay, I'm lacking some intuition, but this is how I receive intuition. You know, someone just yesterday um, was, you know, outside in the park mumbling to himself. And I'm like, oh yeah, you sound, you know, that's a nice telltale sign. Like that's a, a symptom of more your clear audience. He had never heard this word before. And he's like, yeah, I was talking to myself and then I started crying and I was, was releasing all this stuff and all this. And it's just all so new for him. It's like, I don't even know these terms and, and words. And, and it's like, we don't need to know these terms and words. Don't get hung up on any of this. But I find it fun to be conscious of like, hey, um, is this my ego that wants something or is this my intuition that wants something? So for me, again, it's 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 the signs of, you know, ego and fear and like not believing yourself. I can be so headstrong with my goals because I'm a businesswoman and I um, am creative and I love to try new things. So I can be very headstrong and want something really bad. Um, and then, but really if I drop in and really recenter, it's like, do I really want this? Like, where is this coming from? Is this because I want, is this an ego need? Maybe I want, you know, m more money or status or this or that, or I, I'm like, so when I drop in and go, what does my soul really want? Like, do I really need to make more money? Do I really need a status? Do I like going back to my, my real core values, my core authenticity and going, yeah, society is saying I should be doing this, right? Society, but really deep down, I want to take a week off. I want to just go play in the forest. I want to follow my joy. I want to dance. I want to, I want to paint. I want to learn an instrument. I want to learn a little, learn a new language. I like, what does my soul really want? And to again, drop into that and drop. And it, and it takes training because, you know, we just turn on the TV. We leave our house. We go to school. We go to work. We go anywhere. We go to a family event. And that's where all the outside noise starts. So it's like constantly like, you know, maybe repeat the question again. I don't know if I actually answered it. I think you did. And I really like what you said. The question was, sometimes I get conflicting messages. Any suggestions on how to navigate that? But I love that you said, it's about asking yourself what you need and what you want. Because I think the conflicting messages is what we've been socialized to want or what our parents want for us. Or we start asking for validation from other people and we're not centered within ourselves. So then it becomes confusing and conflicting. We have the answer. Mm -hmm. We don't trust it within ourselves. So then we try searching to find out, is this, is this okay? And then we get confused and conflicted and, and the ego comes in and then all the fears. And so, yeah, I love what you said. I think you answered that very well. Thanks, Jess. And you did a really <laughs> nice plug because our first two episodes together was all about trust your intuition. So I invite all of the listeners, like go back and watch Trust Your Intuition, part one and part two, because we shared really fun stories about yeah, just our journey in trusting our intuition. Mm -hmm. It was a long journey. Mm -hmm. We well, put in a, a lot journey. of effort. It's, it's still a journey. Yeah. We're still it's on the journey. Still practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the next question is actually, how can I be more trusting of my intuition instead of questioning it? So we did talk a lot about that in part one and part two of our interviews. But do you want to summarize? Yeah, I'm, you know, I repeat this often that intuition is a muscle that needs to be strengthened and worked out. And like the brain, you know, we can have a very closed mindset or an open mindset. And it's, you know, we can be very closed with our intuition. I think we all have it. Some people tap into it more than others. And it's training. It's training. If we've our whole life have been taught that, it's not important. It's not valid. It, the logical mind is more important. I think this is learned. Yes, there's people, there's different levels of intelligence too. You know, I used to really be hard on myself because I wasn't amazing at math, for example. 
And I've since learned the levels of intelligence and my intelligence, there's emotional intelligence. Maybe I have a higher level of emotional intelligence and connecting with people and intuitive intelligence. And another person is a little bit more mathematical, mathematical, logical in their left brain. And that's not wrong. It's just like, I'm wanting to share that we, we can, I don't even want to say we should, we can have a balance of both. Again, for everything in, in future episodes, we're going to be talking all about balance, the union, the, the union of both left and right brain, masculine and feminine, light, dark, good, bad. We're going to be talking about all of that because that's part of intuition. Intuition is the, you know, it receiving, receptive, or the logical you know, action and doing. And we need both. Um, so, yeah, to trust, it's practice. Practice with little things. When you have enough experiences in your own life, then no one can tell you otherwise. It's you have your own truth, your truth. You won't be looking outside. You won't need a guru. You won't need a teacher because your inner wisdom is your inner compass and your inner guru. You know, I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher, and that's how we start every Kriya or every, you know, class is this mantra reminding ourselves to connect to our inner guru, our inner teacher. That's why I think I'm so drawn to Kundalini yoga, te- uh, yoga now, because it's a constant reminder. We have all of the wisdom within and to integrate that in mind and body into a practice, I think is great. So I'm a super big advocate for, for well, yoga meditation, but now Kundalini yoga. Yeah, I think that's the most important message that you can share with the world is that you have the power within. You have all the answers. You don't have to go looking elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, next question. Do you have any tips for connecting to your intuition? I feel that I've silenced mine so much that I feel disconnected from hearing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, my teachings are all about simplifying, simplifying one's life, slowing down. When our life is so busy and so chaotic and so loud, I find it much more difficult to hear that quiet whisper. So I invite everyone, really, like turn off the TV for one, turn off the radio or not radio. Turn off the or social uh, media, <laughs> turn off social media, but turn off the news. This is what I want to say, which is just bomb. It's bombarding with negativity. You know, I'm very conscious of what I allow in my brain, the podcasts I choose, the types of music I choose, the people I, I want to talk to my friends. Like I'm very, very protective of that, of what enters my brain. I try to be quite protective of that, uh, to have, you know, really, Uh, healthy, like mental health and then slowing down. So I'm a huge, like, again, advocate. This is the word that keeps coming up today. Advocate for, for going into nature. I have a belief system that nature heals everything. And I receive a lot of intuitive guidance when I'm moving. I think moving is important and in nature and being open, not being stuck maybe in my negativity, but opening my eyes and being receptive to intuitive guidance and messages and wisdom. It can be from earth. I've gone, I've received intuitive messages, you know, just seeing wild animals passed from the trees. Like in my yoga, I was in Shavasana the other day. I received a really profound message, just like, boom, it brought me to tears. It's like, that was not my brain. That was, but how often in a day do adults lay in Shavasana in yoga is is called the corpse pose. And you're laying down on a mat without moving for about five to 10 minutes. How often in a day do we do that? Not often. Mm -hmm. You know, know, the people here we're talking to are busy moms, busy executives, CEOs. They don't have time to lay down and hear messages. Who has time for that? So, but we all have time. We all have 10 minutes. So to create that space in our life of slowing down, you know, I'm big into meditation, but meditation can be any activity. It can be washing your dishes, sitting and being a hundred percent present with your child, doing their home, doing homework with them. Um, you know, noticing the birds, 
smelling a flower, just stopping, slowing down. Um, and then there's a, a new level of sensitivity. You know, when I'm overwhelmed and stressed and um, I haven't been burnt out in a very long time, but when I'm that, I, I'm at capacity. There's nothing that can enter. I'm at capacity. You probably have a lot to say about burnout because <laughs> you're a social worker <laughs> in a field where there's so much yeah. burnout, you know, when you're yes, I'm, and relaxed, it's very different. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm very prone to burnout. And even though while I'm stressed and in a chaotic environment, I'm still getting intuitive messages of, of what I need. But I don't trust myself because there's just so much chaos in my life. But I've had the privilege of going to your reconnect to your intuition retreats. And it's like, finally, when I can just de-stress and give myself space to really hear the messages and then I can move forward with a plan. But it's because I've prioritized that that quiet time, that relaxation to to regain some energy. I schedule that in my day. But if we just wait, you know, to feel like we're ready or we like when we feel motivated to do it, it just won't happen. And so it's about really, yeah, I think that's another way to build your intuition, your your trust within yourself is that you are holding yourself accountable by keeping with the routine because, you know, it will pay off in the long run, that short term pain for long term gain. Like you really want to just remind yourself that this is important. Well, I think it's a great segue into speaking about my retreats because you've attended a couple of them. You are like my ideal target market, the busy, burnt out business professional <laughs> who is like, I need a week off. I need to recenter and regroup. <laughs> and I, I call myself more a space holder. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. We're all just in this journey together. I'm learning like everyone else, but I create, I have a beautiful, my dream home by a beautiful lakefront property, uh, just an hour north of Montreal. And we do daily meditation, different types of meditation. There's active, there's passive, there's not one type. So I try and we can incorporate as many different types of meditation as possible. We do a whole set of Hatha yoga in the afternoons. We can do restorative, now Kundalini yoga. We eat really healthy, very simple vegetarian meals. A lot of my guests have never incorporated a lot of these foods. I have like a signature dessert, which is like this vegan chocolate mousse. It's a surprise. Don't tell anyone what it is. <laughs> and like people are just- I'm pretty sure you talk about the mousse every episode. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> it's a lot. I've been eating this mousse a lot lately. Like maybe that's why. And it's a surprise. And it surprises guests by how good, how healthy. And it's just like when our body, and so some people come to the retreats and it's like, oh, my body feels good. That's like, oh, when your body, like for me, my emotions are directly affected by how my body feels. If I don't have enough sleep, if I'm stressed, if I really ate really heavy, greasy, lots of sugar, like my mood is totally different. So it's like, okay, I create a space where it's like, let's just relax the body. Then we can relax the nervous system. Then we can, you know, I have nothing to teach. I just teach through storytelling and through my day, I share with the guests, hey, this is an intuitive thing that happened to me. Hey, this is a synchronicity that happened. Hey, look at this animal that crossed your path. Maybe there's a message and just little little stories at mealtimes. We all eat together and we all go hiking in the forest together, different trails and we have board games. And it's like, how often? I call this adult summer camp for really people who want to have a wellness plan and there's daily coaching. You know, I have an entrepreneur, I always talk about this, but I have an entrepreneur coming soon, businessman, entrepreneur. And he um, was like, what kind of coaching do you do? <clears throat> and I'm like, well, it's like wellness coaching. I'm an intuitive coach. I call myself an intuitive coach. And it's like, if we, every aspect of our life is affected. So if we make one small change, one small improvement here, there's the ripple effect in all other areas of your life will be felt. And so in the week, I bring all of, well, not all, a lot of my knowledge, a lot of different habits, a lot of different things to try, and then we create an action plan. 
and everyone's different. And they're like, I'm going to take this home, this home, this home, and this home. And it's like, if you do that consistently on a daily basis, a year from now, your life is going to be radically different, radically different. Um, you know, couple like last year, you refused to even send a voice message to our family. <laughs> you refuse. You don't even do <laughs> likes on Facebook. You refuse to like things on Facebook. And now you're like, yep, yeah, I'm ready. We're going to do, uh, we did some coaching. We did some like, okay, let's do some coaching about this. You have a story, you have a message, you have a gift. You do retreats and workshops yourself, which I've attended, which are amazing. We could talk about that in maybe another episode. <laughs> and, uh, or we could send a link. We can actually put a link on here if you want, Jasmine, uh, for this episode, because you've created an amazing online program that all people need, especially healthcare professionals, because that's your clinical social worker. And um, yeah, and it's just little daily habits that can change everything. So Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for being here, for asking those questions. Join us for part two, uh, where we're going to continue these questions. And I invite you all to uh, follow, follow me on Inside Timer and visit my website at www.intuitivebusinessconnections.com. Thanks so much, Jazz. See you next time. Thank you for listening to The Dawn of Intuition. I'm your host, J.D. Kindred. Tune in every first and third Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as we learn to listen to that quiet whisper of wisdom from our higher selves. Dare to dream bigger, take inspired action, and live your authentic truth. Live an intuitive life, feeling more joyful and empowered in everything you do. For more tips and tricks, follow me online at www dot intuitive business connections dot com.